room assignment. The budget hearing is in the gallery. <laughs> but, uh, if you're here for the lecture, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the Institute on World Affairs to today's lecture on culture and crisis in Central America. Uh, our lecturer is a Nicaraguan fiction writer and poet. He's a winner of the fifth Centennial Short Story Award from the Nicaraguan Institute of Culture and is a part of a new regional literary movement bringing together common cultural elements of Central American countries. He has two books, Cultural Policy and Night of the Exiles. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Alberto Salamanca Castello. Thank you. Uh, uh, to begin with, uh, I will say I have many, many things to tell you. But as, as you know, chance, uh, chances are small for people from our country to come here to Iowa to deliver some lecture, especially in such a cold winter like this one we, we have now. <laughs> uh, well, there are so, ma so many things I would like to tell you, but as time is so short, I, I think I, I will try to make just a few points. I think some of you, at, at least, I think most, perhaps, of you are interested in knowing something about the situation now that this, that we have now in Nicaragua. Well, I, I think he said um, from Nicaragua. For this, uh, do you know all of you know where it is in the map in the center? Uh, I mean, in the middle of Central America, uh, it is uh, located. And I think it, it has had a lot of coverage by newspapers in the past uh, recent years. I mean, and they have uh, newspapers have uh, have um, given wide uh, information about what was going on there in the past uh, ten years. I think. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, after this, uh, I think the. I think you know that we had some elections, I mean free and fair elections uh, that were supervised by the United Nations in 1990. And in these elections, uh, the Sandinista government, uh, I mean the, the, gov the Sandinistas, do you know who are the Sandinistas? I, I hope they were, uh, they were defeated and then a new government came to power, and it is uh, headed by a woman whose name is Violeta Chamorro. Well, I, I want to tell you also, uh, I am not a scholar, <laughs> uh, but re I am really a writer. But of course, I am interested, as all of us are, in political matters. But uh, I mean, what I'm trying to say is, my view uh, thinks is not so scholarly as I would like it to be. I, I think you, you understand what I mean. Uh, um, I mean, politics is something that somehow has to do with the scholarly, because you have to to make some research to get into the, I think, uh, the, the nature, I mean, the very, the essence of matters, and, and to get the clearer view of, of things that are involved in politics. It's not, I think, something to do by, as you say, uh, to play by ear or something like this. Uh -huh. Well, as uh, as concerns these uh, elections, I was telling you about it. It happened that the Sandinistas were, let's we say, uh, overthrown from power by by I mean in a peaceful way, and then there there came a new government. And the banner, I mean, the platform of this new government was uh, reconciliation, you know, and and, and I mean, they, they proposed that the highest aim would be to bring peace to the country, you know. And so I think in a way it has been, uh, it, this goal has been reached because even if we have some skirmishes uh, going on in the mountains of the, con of the country, I mean, 
countryside, even so, there the war war has been uh, almost completely stop, stopped. Uh, as, as it concerns the some uh, analysis of the of these years, the Sandinista revolu revolution was uh, in power. I mean, uh, some explanation of it, of what was going on, of what happened in these years. I have my, my own views uh, I would like to share with you. Uh, I think that there was, in this war we had, there was a part of U United States responsibility. Because uh, I think the, the, the two, the two, uh, two, let me say, two points. <coughs> I would say so a little in, in the first, I mean, uh, uh, the first, uh, let's we say, uh, guilt or responsibility of the United States was to have supported Somoza's dictatorship for a long time, almost 50 years. And I think it, it this made people to be very, to have uh, strong feelings against the United States. I mean, I mean many people in my country. And it happened, it, ha it helped. It. After Somoza was of, uh, overthrown, uh, these feelings that, that were uh, been, that had been there, I mean, uh, accumulating for so, for such a long time, they, uh, these feelings emerged, and, and people, uh, it was easy for leaders to capitalize these feelings and, and to unite <coughs> lots, uh, I mean, uh, lots of people around this. Uh, for, uh, they are about the, around their, I would say, their own um, purpose, their own goals uh, that were in some, in no way, were, had a lot to do with uh, anti-imperialism. You say anti-imperialism, uh huh. And so uh, the other, the other factor I think is important is this uh, what I call hysterical approach to to the matter. Uh, from Reagan's, uh, because he he, he said uh, it was a a trait. Revolution in Nicaragua was a trait to Amer to United States security, which I think it's not uh, really true, because it was uh, something. I mean, the way this revolution was handled, the way the United States dealt with it was as if, as if it was. A very strong threat, 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 threat to the United States security, and so it, it made things worse because it didn't give a chance to get to go to get some agreement between uh, Nicaragua leaders in Nicaragua and and, the, and leaders in the United States. I mean, this way of of. I've seen, seen things make things worse, and because uh, the the climate, political climate, became too hot, too hot, too too tense, to in order to to to, uh, to get some kind of, of agreement or deal. As, uh, I think, as it concerns also the Sandinistas, the, the, I think they also had some responsibility. I mean, the commanders, the the, the, the chief, the heads of Sandinista government. I would think the the most, the, the worst, uh, or the, the gravest mistakes they made was to to act in a way that I would call absolute, like I mean, absolutism, uh -huh, and and pretending they were they were the the owners of truth. I mean, political truth, and and as and uh, see, seeing political matters 
as uh, and political truth as, some, as something that was uh, to be uh, to be got by some sort of revelation, you know, revelation, revelation uh, that would come from from heaven, but not from heaven, but uh, not as mo but most mostly I would say it, the same way as it is in in the communist countries. They think the Communist Party, because they are familiar with theories, uh, Marxist theories, Marxist-Leninism, it allows them to, to get uh, privileged access to truth that the other people that are outside the, their circles circle are not able to reach. Do you know what, what I mean? Uh -huh. And so they, they behave it in this way. And as pretending to be the, the owners of truth, they left out many people that became alien, I mean, uh, became some, in some, uh, uh, I mean, uh, after some time became uh, enemies. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think also uh, the, the crucial or the turning point in, in this revolution was in 1917 and 1980, when the government, uh, we had in this time a sort of, we have junta, <coughs> we had a junta, we, we call it, uh, there were uh, five people in, in, uh, in the, ruling, ruling the country, we had five people, and Two and three were Sandinistas, and two were people from uh, I would call what I, we could call the conservative, uh, traditional politicians, and so uh, they were trying to rule uh, the country together. But uh, in these years, 1979 and 1980, it, this uh, alliance was broken. And so the Sandinistas, they, they stayed in power alone. I mean, the other people retired. And I think it is the turning point, because after this happened, uh, the situation became more polarized, you know, polarized, polarized and, and it, it became uh, almost impossible to get, again, people together. Uh, if I were a historian, I think I would try to investigate this period to, to know whether it was possible, as how possible it was to to not, I mean, to avoid this kind of, of breaking, you know, where uh, this ruptura, breaking between the 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 different uh, different blocks that were trying to make this alliance in, in order to, to rule together, to rule the country together. Uh, also, uh, I would like to say, we, we, we had these uh, leaders, uh, I, mean, I think they are not so guilty after all, because they, they were, they were the, the result of a situation, I mean, the dictator, Somoza's dictatorship, where you had uh, almost no chance to see political politics in a way that would not be somehow uh, schema, schematized, schematized, uh -huh, or I mean, uh, as to see only only two ways. I mean, uh, we, we had not, I am including myself even, even in this kind of view, you had no, no way to see things in a way, that, in a sophisticated way. We, we all we knew were was uh, American are supporting Somoza, Somoza is wrong, Somoza is, a, is a, I mean, Somoza is a nasty guy, so we, we have to fight him and fight also the United States. And, and they were, they were. I mean, uh, somehow, uh, reason, educados, educated within this kind of, of view. 
uh, I think also uh, writers and intellectuals in general, we were uh, guilty of not being critical because uh, during during the, this uh, time the Sandinistas were in power uh, all, they became, as I, as I told you before, they, they became uh, like some kind of owners of truth uh, and they, they were uh, the ideas were to be were to rule in any field, any field at all. I mean, uh, the the commandantes. Do you know what it means? Commandantes would would uh, write or talk about how to how journalism had to be done, how religion had to be done, how anything. I mean, how household house care had to be done, uh, how philosophy had to be done, anything, you, you mention it. And so the, the other people, they only, the, I mean, I include, uh, again, myself, the only thing we did was to approve, approve, I mean, unconditionally, ne never any kind of, of criticism. <laughs> After they, they fell, I mean, they fell from power, they, they, re they have, I mean, right now, they have uh, made many, uh, they, are, they, are, they have become a little, or perhaps uh, not just a little, but but very uh, self criticism self criticizing, uh, self -criticizing. Uh -huh. and so they have be, they have recognized that they, they made mistakes that perhaps if it, if if they had in time been uh, pointed at pointed at it w they would have somehow been uh, solved. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, I would say that much as it concerns the evaluation of the past. And also, uh, now I would like to talk something about uh, the present. Uh, and, and it is uh, and also about what I call the aftermath of our revolution. Uh, I would think, uh, I, would, I would begin, uh, I mean, the first thing I would say is this aftermath is, is quite uh, bad. I would even say it's terrible because the country is impoverished. As it hasn't, I think it has not, well, not only I think many people say, as it has never been before in our history, even from we, we got independent from Spain. I mean, the situation is so hard as it had never been before. Because even if sometimes in the past we had difficulties, at least the, the, the people had more chance to survive because they had traditional way of surviving. I mean, uh, peasants, for instance. But now as uh, this kind of uh, subsistencia, agriculture. Huh? Subsistencia. Subsistence, subsistence, uh, ways of sustenance, subsistence have also, I mean, disappeared. Also, unemployment in, is very high. I, some people say about 45 percent of the population that is uh, able to work are unemployed. Uh, many people seek a way out uh, through immigration. Uh, if they don't, if they do not go away, they at least consider it some time. <coughs> and they many also dream about. I mean, they live by dreaming. Viven soñando. They they live by dreaming. They will get out some someday. I think these things are pretty sad to to talk about. But unfortunately. I wouldn't feel my. I would feel myself. I would feel uncomfortable to talk about my country and not to say these kinds of things, even if they are not to uh, to something not too funny to talk about. Uh, I also I have well as a matter. I want to tell you something uh, to give some graphics. Uh, there is people in my country that goes to dumps. Uh, to pick some food, and, and, and they, have, they have told them not to do it because in these dumps, basureros, dumps, we, we have uh, 
they have a chance, they, they risk to get the cholera, cholera, uh -huh. and, and cholera, I don't know if it has reached my country already, I hope it hasn't, but when I came here, it was, it had reached the other countries around, we, we had it in El Salvador, here, and I think it was, I don't remember if it had, if it had reached Panama, but it was, uh, it was already in Mexico, and Guatemala, and El Salvador, this uh, epidemia, epidemics of cholera, and, and, and they tell this, they tell people to not go to pick food, pick up food at these dumps because you, you are likely to get this disease. But some of them, he said, I'd rather die of cholera than die of hunger. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, pretty sorrow, I mean, sad. Mm, also, well, people, uh, they, they like, they, they struggle. I saw, I have seen people struggling, struggling in, the, in, the, in some places to get the chance to, to go to work. Some, I saw some of them were, were trying to get to go to work as seasonal uh, coffee pickers in Costa Rica. It's, it's very not so, so far. It's, uh, neighbor and and but as a matter of fact the president of Costa Rica he came here last month to to the United States and he said that we sh that the United States should help Nicaragua first even if if he would even even if, if the most uh, likely thing he would do is to ask for help for his own country he recognized the situation of Nicar of Nicaragua was the worst in, in all Central America. Mm -hmm. And he said, you should support them first. Uh, also, well, I, I would like to talk a little about the region uh, as well. I think, uh, you know, there is there in Salvador and Guatemala, we have some guerrilla guerrilla warfare going on. In, in El Salvador, it had lasted for about 11 years. And in Guatemala, it had lasted much longer, I think about 30 years, perhaps. And, and this guerrilla, and, the, and this is uh, guerrilla also is, uh, I mean, it's kind of, it's a kind of war. War between the government and, and this, uh, Leftist, leftist group, groups that are fighting for some kind of change, reform, political change in, in their countries. And uh, in the past uh, years, uh, they have, this war has taken the lives of many peoples. And there are also, in these two countries, there are Escuadrones de la Muerte, Escuadrones de la Muerte, Dead squads uh -huh, that are very, very active, active, mm -hmm. and people many times you you find uh, dead in streets and with their hands tied like this, uh -huh. and some, I mean many many terrible things they they do to people who are against the the these governments and I think uh, the United States uh, are somehow responsible also in this case because these governments we have, we have in Guatemala and El Salvador, they are pro-American, pro pro-American you say, and they have very close, close links with the United States. And if the United States were, would to exert a hardest pressure in these governments, I think they would accelerate the, these peace talks that have been going on for a long time. <coughs> Perhaps you remember in El Salvador, we had uh, some six uh, priests. Perhaps you, you don't remember. Six priests, I mean, uh, Jesuitas. Jesuits. 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 They, they were killed. And, and then the government uh, said they were, uh, they were killed by the army. Mm -hmm. during uh, 
sort of rebellion, I mean some uh, rising, they had the political, I mean the, the guerrilla, they, they, they took hold of some part, some part of the capital city of San Salvador. And then uh, things became very, very, for the government, things became quite uh, difficult. And then during this, uh, I think it lasted for about a week. And, and the government, they, they sent the army to, I mean, to fight against uh, these people. And during this time, they killed these this six priests that were in, in the house. And also they killed the, they killed the, the, the cook and, and this daughter of the cook. Well, but it is just one among many, many other crimes. But what I want to, to point out is it seemed at the time, at this time, at the time I'm talking about, it seemed like these killings of these priests would, would uh, uh, I mean, would uh, conducir, lead, to. lead to some investigation that would, the, would have the, make the culprits to be taken to prison, but this kind of, of things has not happened. I mean, the, the army never has been uh, asked to answer for, for their crimes. And the United States, I think, they should, they should make some real big effort, as, this, as, as, they, are, uh, as they are doing in, in uh, uh, Mediano Oriente, Israel, Israel, Middle East, yes in order to get the, the Jews and the Arab people to these peace talks they have. As James Baker, he has been very involved in, in getting these peace talks being done. I think perhaps they, they would, with even not so great an effort, manage to get the, to get the people. I mean, uh, if you compare both situations, I think our, our, situa our situation in Central America is much more simple because the governments are very much, uh, I mean, obedient, I would say, to the United States policies as they are uh, in many ways uh, depending. Uh, mean, I mean, uh, military support, economic, economical support, they are so dependent on the United States, it wouldn't be so hard for the United States to get these governments do something they want them to do. And this thing to do would be to get some agreement to, with people involved in guerrilla warfare. And uh, there's another point that is connected <coughs> with this one. You know, Cuba is very close to Central America. And uh, some uh, last month, also the Carlos Andres Perez, the president of Venezuela, he said Cu Cuba had been had stopped being uh, some, some. He said something like Cuba had stopped be, uh, being uh, a problem. Let's we say because the Cold War was over. But I think it's all right. I think he's he's right, but. Perhaps uh, we should uh, say something, a little something more. Hacer una puntualización. No, no, no. Well, to say something else. Uh, for instance, uh, I think uh, Cuba is related to guerrilla warfare in Central America. I, I think this is obvious, but the the fact is these people who are fighting. They have, perhaps, they, do not, they do not have support, I mean material support from Cuba, but even if they don't have it, I'm not sure if they have it or they don't. Uh, I cannot, uh, ask, not, I can, I'm not positive about it, this. But even if they don't, don't, do not have this material support, they surely have, I mean, moral or spiritual, spiritual support from Cuba, as Cuba represents uh, an alternative way to handle political and social, especially social and well, social and social political, social political matters in uh, in our country that is uh, small, poor, and dependent. 
four, I think. Uh, in Cuba, even if we don't like the kind of government they have, I mean the way of, of Fidel Castro's ways of ruling Cuba, we have to accept they have found a way to avoid having people dying from hunger. And this is, uh, I mean, uh, for these poor countries, this is the greatest of achievements. Uh, I think the way Cuba is criticized, for instance, by Bush, Pre President Bush, is a little, uh, I mean, superficial sometimes. They, he talks about the way human rights are being violated, but in fact, human rights are, are uh, to the right to not to die from hunger is human right also. <laughs> Yes, and, and so it's not so easy to, to, to make some decision about which would be the best way for these countries to, to, I mean, to take, which way to take, which way would be the best one. But uh, perhaps I'm not, also I'm not, uh, I want to say I am not uh, approving Fidel, Castro way, Fidel Castro's ways of ruling Cuba. Maybe uh, he should give people chance to 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 have elections, but it, there, there is also I recognize it is uh, problematic because if some elections were to be held in Cuba, uh, most likely the United States, as Fidel Castro, he has pointed at this, uh -huh, the United States would, would uh, fund 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 the the other party. And this other party would, would be most power, powerful, and it would be getting more chances to to win. But anyway, anyway, it, it would be I think it would be possible to get some agreement and to avoid this kind of situation, uh, confrontation, uh, especially I think the blockade against Cuba. It should be reached perhaps in gradually. This is my, my own view. Perhaps it would be uh, done something uh, in order to to reach to raise the blockade. Raise the blockade. It's all right. I mean, the, the suspender el bloqueo. To lift blockade. Uh huh. Fine to lift blockade against Cuba and let them get at least some medical supplies and some, uh, some uh, food for children. I mean, things like this in order to make perhaps some experiment as to see whether this would, uh, in a way, make relations with Cuba a little less tense. I mean, I don't know, something like this uh, in order to, to find a, a way out of this confrontation between the United States and Cuba. And also, I think it's related to guerrilla, guerrilla warfare in Central and Latin America, because we also have guerrilla in Colombia and Peru. Um, well, I, I'm not sure where, where else. But at least in those countries we have. And so uh, I think this is uh, the point that is that should be considered. I remember some Spanish Spanish writer. He he wrote something. He says, in Latin America, it still it still is possible to do politics based on um, based on uh, messianic hope, esperanza messianica, mm -hmm. messianic, messianic or messianistic hope. And I think it is because the peoples are so impoverished that they, they, no, longer, they no longer trust there is a way out. Uh, but if it would not come from some, well, I mean, I mean, they, they are they, they are likely to get to to believe. They need to believe, and so if you offer them some kind of sol messianistic solution, they are likely to accept it, and very enthusiastically. 
enthusiastic mm -hmm. that's what I mean and also well this much I would say about the about the after the, the region situation and now I will try to to arrive at some conclusions uh, I think uh, people from my country, they, they will never, uh, they will never forgive me, forgive me if I would not take advantage of this situation in order to ask uh, for help for, for all of my country. Because, well, I think even if some help has been delivered, uh, still there is a great need for, for some more help. Because, uh, as I told you before, the situation is pretty precari precarious. Mm -hmm. um, also, I think uh, the problem of social justice, the, the guerrilla, is guerrilla warfare is linked <coughs> to the, the the poverty of these countries, because as there is so little. Richness, uh, the, I mean, uh, there are so many poor people, it becomes uh, harder for the poor to endure their situation because this poorness is so deep. Something, I mean, very, very poor people. And these who are fighting in, on their behalf, they think it is, they are doing something that is uh, the most humane they can do, and I think they're right, in, in a way they are. Because the governments, they, they, will, they, they are most uh, oriented, oriented to bourgeoisie oriented, did you say? Uh -huh. And so they, they do not care so much, so much as peop about people who, who are very poor. And so uh, the political situation is the w the way to, to I mean to solve political. I think it is too obvious, perhaps, to say, but perhaps some you you haven't thought about this. The way to solve political situation is linked to the solving of this uh, poverty, because as long as poverty is so bad there will always be people who think the way out of this poverty would be to fight the government, overthrow it, in order to distribute the richness in a different way that would be more, more just. Uh, and so it is almost uh, unavoidable. Uh, also, I, I think perhaps it would be interesting as we are in this kind of meeting that is, uh, I mean, we are, I'm speaking here and you are listening to me within this, the context of this uh, institution, Institute of World Affairs, is this kind of, of seminar, what would you call this? Uh -huh. We have this kind of seminar here that uh, somehow is, uh, somehow proves we, we have, we all do care about international affairs. And if we do care about international affairs going on, I think it would be an interesting idea that this institution would fund, fund some, some institute in my country and all, all, all the Latin American countries that would try to do some research, uh, political research, soci and social also. The, I mean, that in order to make politics uh, a little more self-conscious, I mean, politics would have uh, some background, uh, scholarly background, because we almost don't have any nothing of this kind. Politics is, as I told you before, played by ear, by ear, uh, we have now the, the president. He, he, he is a guy who had never been involved with, in politics almost. Perhaps it would be, would be a good idea to try to, to make, to get people 
try to get some people from these countries involved with, in political research, I mean affair, political affairs, but they have the money to, to develop this kind of research. Perhaps they would need some foreign source to, to, to fund the, the, this kind of research. At least, I, I think, in my country, it would be the only way at least I, I can assure. Perhaps in the other, in some other countries, it would not be the same. But in my country, it is this is the case. Uh, well, as just to to in order to finish to as a final thing, I would say uh, I believe a new uh, awareness awareness uh, is uh, about political world political affairs is arising and I think there is some and I think people like you and me perhaps we, we can contribute something of our own in order to achieve the results we are all seeking after that's what I want to say thank you Well, well, if you have any question, please. Okay. Does Nicaragua have the agricultural resources to be self-sufficient in food under, a, under the proper system of land tenure and exploitation? I'm sorry, would you please Nicaragua, translate? Tiene Nicaragua la capacidad agrícola de ser autosuficiente con el sistema apropiado de uh, well, yes, he, he's asking if my country is self-sufficient, uh, uh, agricultural. It can be. It can be. Uh -huh. Well, I think it is, yes. We only have three and a half million people, and the country's uh, size is, is uh, bigger than Czechoslovakia, for instance, where they have say some 10 million people we have we have lots of lands i mean proportionally and i think we, we could perhaps manage to to feed all our people yes. what happened to the traditional methods of uh, uh to to survive them and if they ha if you have these resources what what caused this loss of traditional methods Mm -hmm. Well, it's a very, so a little difficult to answer, but uh, the fact is uh, conditions have uh, very much, uh, the, I mean, uh, in Peru, worsened, worsened, worsen, uh -huh. Did more people move to the city because of the war? Or the well, was, I think this would be one of the reasons many people go to, to, to the cities, and we have lots of people working in what they call the... Informal markets, informal market. Do you know what I mean? People who who sell things, uh, but there are too many things. Black market, yes. I just, I just uh, wanted to make a comment. Um, I guess I just want to tell you that there's many of us U.S. citizens that did not support the United States war against your country, mm -hmm. and the United States government's tactics of terrorism in Central America, creation of the death. Death squads, um, breaking ex Nazis like Klaus Barbie out of jail to run death squad school. There are many of us who see that for what it is and do not uh, respect what our government is doing in terms of the terrorism. Uh huh. That's okay. You mentioned a scenario if there would be an election in Cuba. Do you think that similar type of scenario took place in the recent election in Nicaragua? Well, that's a, also a difficult question. Uh, I think perhaps, perhaps it would be a little different because in Cuba they have had uh, 30 years the same, same president, same government. We only had the same government for 10 years. And in Cuba the government is more, uh, I mean, uh, 
stronger, of course it's stronger, and all, but also the, the people, they have been more influenced but, but by what has been happening. I mean, their views, uh, I'm not really sure, but I think uh, socialist views, and uh, communist, I would say, communism has uh, somehow been, uh, I mean, abrazado, adoptado, embraced, yes, embraced by, by most, by some, at least some part of population. Mm -hmm. And Cuba is different also because it's, it's an island and we, we have this, uh, all this influence from the other countries and they are, if they say, uh, let's no other people come here, I mean, they isolated themselves easily. They have been more isolated and they have more, have had more, I mean, they have had closer relationship with the Soviet Union and the uh, communist bloc, Some, something rather different. Mm -hmm. Well, well if, if, if there's no other question, I would like to thank you again.